Everyone's getting out of Russia. We know why. But what's the lesson for the practice of law? If you're a marketing or professional development individual, you need to know what your lawyers are going through right now. And if you're a lawyer, you need to understand which rules are at play. Because even if you never deal with sanctioned individuals, what those other law firms are going through now, it's relevant to your practice. Everyone is dumping everything Russian. Russian tea? Dump it in the harbor. Hey, Jared, you got, uh, you got Russian tea in that mug? I don't drink tea. Prove it. <laughs> Russian stacking dolls. No more. You know what? No Russian to judgment either. You know what I think about that? Yet, If it's Russian, we're done with it, right? And big business is in on it as well. Every large company is divesting from Russia. You pick up the newspaper and you can see that every company is dumping their Russian business. Even TJ Maxx is moving out of Russia. Now Russians will be denied the joy of searching through a rack of 50 mismatched items only to finally find the one you love that's not in your size. Now I try to make light of some of the more horrible things happening in this world because it allows me to be able to get lessons out to people in a bit more of an engaging manner. But clearly what's happening in Ukraine is an absolute tragedy. We feel terrible about what's happening to the Ukrainian people. It's devastating. And each one of us is trying to do what we can to end the horror over there. That's why US businesses are extricating themselves from Russia. They're trying to apply pressure however they can and large law firms are trying to do the same thing. But notice the word I very carefully selected there, trying. Law firms aren't traditional businesses and we can't just dump our clients when we want to. We've got the ethics rules to deal with, specifically rule 1.16, which addresses our ability to withdraw from representation. And that's what's causing a problem for firms who are trying to dump their Russian clients. Rule 1.16 explains when a lawyer can ethically withdraw from representing a client. Subsection A talks about the instances where a lawyer is required to withdraw, and subsection B sets forth those instances where a lawyer is permitted to withdraw. It's that latter section that contains a variety of reasons that a law firm could rely upon to justify their withdrawal from the representation of Russian clients. Take a look at subsection 4. It's pretty much on point. That allows a lawyer to dump a client when the client does something that the lawyer considers repugnant or with which the lawyer has a fundamental disagreement. But law firms can't just grab that section and say, okay, you've done something repugnant, I'm out. Truth is they can't take any part of that rule and simply say, because this section applies, I'm going to withdraw from this matter. There's an important practical step that lawyers have to go through. You gotta ask the court for permission to withdraw. And when the court reviews that application, they're gonna check to see whether 1.16B1 has been complied with. That section only allows withdrawal if it can be accomplished without material adverse effect on the interests of the client. And that's where these firms with Russian clients are having a problem. I'll give you an example. Some firms are representing Russian banks in matters pending in U.S. courts, and they're trying to withdraw from their representation of those banks. Not only might the firm think that representing the Russian financial institutions is bad from a political point of view, but these banks have been put on the sanctions list as well, which means doing business with them could violate the law. But courts are resisting. In some instances, firms have been working on matters that have been going on for years, and trial is imminent. In cases like that, it's not going to be easy for a client to get another lawyer and get them up to speed in time for this trial that's coming up. <laughs> sure, you could push the trials off. But some of these cases have been going on for years, and the courts want to resolve the matters. By the time you get another firm and they figure out what's going on, it could take another year. The courts are concerned that if these law firms withdraw, it's going to have a material adverse effect on the client not to mention the effect on their docket. And if a court tells a law firm that the firm can't withdraw from one of these cases, the firm has to listen. That same rule, 1.16, there's another subsection, subsection C. And that says that if a lawyer is ordered by a tribunal to continue representing a client, the lawyer has to continue representation, notwithstanding good cause for terminating the representation. And some international firms have an added issue. If they have to continue representing these firms, they might be in violation of certain European laws. In the UK, for instance, the Solicitor's Regulation Authority recently sent out a press release. They said there's a whole list of sanctioned individuals. And they reminded lawyers that the financial sanctions regime prevents law firms from doing business or acting for listed individuals, entities, or ships. They also said that if an individual is on the sanctions list and subject to an asset freeze, firms may not deal with those funds or make resources available to that person. They warn lawyers that breaching the financial sanctions requirements can result in criminal prosecution or a fine. How this is going to play out, we just don't know. 
There are arguments that the firm can make to try to convince the courts to let them out. I mean, if a client's on a sanctions list and the law firm continues to represent them, maybe you could say that you're being used in the pursuit of a crime or fraud in violation of Rule 1.2D. Or maybe if your assistance is helping them engage in money laundering to hide assets to avoid sanctions, well, then you're also assisting in a fraud and you're going to want to be removed as counsel. But I don't know how you're going to be able to make that argument without revealing confidentiality. All I can tell you is that firms are going to pull out all the stops to try to allow to be removed from these cases. We don't know what the courts are going to do, but it's a mess. For now, though, no more Russian stuff. No more Fabergé eggs. In fact, no eggs of any kind. No, no eggs. No eggs of any kind. Why? That was my breakfast. This is the Russian River in Alaska. Maybe we shouldn't fish there anymore. And let's not forget the booze. No white Russians anymore. No, no white Russians! No white Russians! It's just milk. <laughs> was it Russian milk? No. <laughs> it was just milk. <laughs> Come on, don't you want to play with me anymore? No!